In this screencast, we're going to take a look at what happens to our <clears throat> open loop system when we add a controller with derivative, derivative action in it. So if we take a look at just the derivative action part of the controller, now of course you would never use a derivative only system. But um, if we took a, take a look at just this part of the derivative control, what we see here is that you have this parameter tau d, which is called the derivative time. And this determines the strength of the derivative action. The larger tau d is, the more derivative action you have in the controller. Now the transfer function of this controller is the following. gc of s is equal to kc times tau d times s, because the Laplace transform of the time derivative of e of t is s times e of s. We divide through e of s to the other side to get our transfer function. Now in this case, up until this point, we've considered what happens when you add a piece of a controller algorithm to a first order system. In this case, we're going to consider what happens when you add derivative only control to a second order system. And the reason will become apparent in just a little bit. So for a second order system, your open loop transfer function in standard form is going to look like this. Kp in the numerator divided by tau n squared s squared plus 2 tau n zeta s plus 1. So then, working out the closed loop transfer function with um, keeping our GC and our G process open loop in mind, it looks like the following. So you have G closed loop as a function of s is equal to Kc tau d times s, that's our um, controller transfer function times kp all divided by tau n squared s squared plus 2 tau n zeta s plus 1. All of that divided by the exact same thing we just put here in the numerator right there. All of that plus 1. Now, of course, what we want to do is we want to put this into standard form. So I'm going to take this denominator and I'm going to multiply it down onto this denominator. So the denominator of this transfer function that's in the numerator of the overall transfer function, closed loop, and I'm going to move that down into here. What that will do is it will cancel out the denominator here and then show up here by multiplying by plus one there. So in the numerator, we have just kc, kp, tau d times s. And all of that is then divided by tau n squared s squared plus 2 tau n zeta plus kc kp tau d times s plus 1. So what we see is that as you move this um, polynomial down into the denominator, what you get is you still have this 2 tau n zeta times s term here, but then you also have this kc times kp times tau d s term in the denominator as well. And so those two get added together as the coefficient that's multiplying s. Now, why is that important? Because if we compare this to a standard form of our second order system, which would look like tau n squared s squared, so that's the same, plus now it's just 2 tau n zeta is what you would expect for the s term, plus 1. So when you add derivative control, you get this extra um, um, term here inside of the coefficient that multiplies s. If we work this out, what you end up getting is that this now wants to be equal to 2 times tau n, the new tau n, which is actually the same as the old tau n because the, the s squared term is the same. So the same tau, you have the same tau n as before, times zeta closed loop. So if we work this out, then zeta closed loop is equal to our old zeta plus this new term kc kp tau d over 2 tau n. All I've done is I've 
equated this with this, and then solve for zeta closed loop. So what this means is that zeta closed loop is greater than our old zeta. What else happens here? Well, evidently, derivative action neither changes the order of the system, because we started out with a second order system, and we ended up with a second order system, nor does it eliminate offset, because in this standard form, the numerator is not equal to 1, so it doesn't eliminate offset. However, you must note that tau n remains the same, right? So we have the same tau n, the same thing multiplying our s squared term, but the closed loop damping factor, zeta closed loop, is greater than the open loop damping factor. In other words, what derivative control is primarily used for is to reduce the oscillatory nature of a feedback response. Derivative action opposes, opposes major rapid changes in the closed variable. And therefore, what derivative, act, derivative action does is reduces or dampens oscillations. This is the reason why we looked at the action of derivative control applied to a second order system rather than a first order system. Because if derivative control, if its point is to dampen oscillations, there's no use in adding it to a first order only system. You only want to add it to a system that is oscillating a little bit too much like a second order system or a higher order system.